Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today on our Shift to Riches Formula uh, overview and webinar. And I am thrilled to have you. This is Bernadette Bowes, and you're going to hear a lot more about me on today's particular program because of the fact that with the overview comes a little bit of a backdrop in regards to uh, who I am and what I do and and how did Shedding the Bitch really come about and what's this shift to riches formula all about as well. Before we get started, if you are watching online and you're able to see the presentation, uh, you can follow along. If you're not and you're just listening in, that's great too because uh, there's no magic sauce in what we're going to talk about, so you'll be able to follow along very easily uh, as well um, throughout throughout the program. So that's fine too. And then just keep in mind, I am uh, videotaping this. We're not audio recording uh, that will be released, but we are videotaping it. And if you are a Richie Club member on SheddingTheBitch.com, you'll be able to get a bit of that recording as well. So uh, we like to do a little bit of everything here so you can take advantage of the content in whatever form is most uh, useful to you. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. If you do have a question, you can chat in on the console if you are um, online, and I would be more than happy to take your questions. Apart from that, I would open it up at the end for any questions, um, should you have any. And then at any time you need to reach me, you can always reach me at Bernadette Bowes at SheddingTheBitch.com um, and I will be more than happy to take your, your questions there as well. So to get started, I just wanted to really talk about uh, something that I advocate and I actually I learned this from some mentors of mine as well. I always hope through all the work that I do that I'm able to educate, inspire, and motivate you. And in turn, you would be able to go and educate, inspire, and motivate someone else. So if you do learn something today throughout the program, I would love to, you to capture it. Feel free to um, take notes on it and then share it out with your friends. And I'm not concerned as much sharing it out and, and crediting Shade and the Bitch, although you can, <laughs> certainly. But more importantly, just let's help each other kind of learn to have a much richer life. So if you do, and at the same time, if you want to notify me that you did, kind of give yourself a pat on the back, then feel free to shoot me an email as well at BernadetteBose at SheddingTheBitch.com. Just simply all you have to put in the, in the uh, subject line is Teaching Shift to Riches, and I'd love to give you a shout out on our uh, website and on Facebook and Twitter and anywhere else that I socialize um, just for teaching and educating and inspire, inspiring other people. So keep that in mind. Also, if you are tweeting throughout the program, which I'll also I'd advocate as well, uh, you can tweet your comments and your uh, learnings and tweet it to hashtag shift to riches, shift to riches, okay? Now, the objective of this particular program is to really motivate you to take the first step in really identifying and working on those things that are holding you back, what we call bitches here, and yet at the same time, those things that, uh, those riches that you already possess, your talents, your skills, your experiences, your achievements. And our Shift to Riches formula allows you kind of to do that in a, a, a phasing, a sequence, a, um, a, a series of steps. So that's one of our objectives. And at the same time, I want to provide you tips and tools. I really want to help as many people as I can around the world to really just recognize how brilliant they are and how successful and how rich their life can be if they just took some time to focus on them on you as opposed to we tend to especially us women we tend to focus on everybody else but ourselves all right and then of course i want to invite you to an exclusive group um, not only the richie club but even a more exclusive group group that would work on me work with me <laughs> I need some help too, but work work with me and together as a community to help you shift from bitch to rich through the shift to riches formula. So let me give you a little bit of background of myself and not your traditional, this is what I do as a professional. 
but more so um, how did I come to be as far as the ultimate corporate bitch, as far as the book I'd written, and as far as this brand, Shedding the Bitch, um, is all about, and then where the shift to riches formula stemmed from, because I'm asked about it frequently, frequently. So a little bit about myself. And if you're watching this online and you can see the uh, presentation, uh, I have some great photographs and visuals throughout the program, and uh, I love to tout my uh, my family and my puppy. So uh, I am one of 12 children. I, I am your stereotypical middle child at that. Uh, I have five sisters and six brothers to the same parents. I'm always asked that. To the same parents of 50 plus years that they were married um, prior to my father passing away uh, in 2005. He was my he was my absolute hero, and my mother continues to be my absolute rock. And being a middle child, <laughs> you could just, and being a redhead, you could just picture um, kind of the sassy, precocious, 3F sister I, I was, and now I, bat, I am again. And 3F stands for Foxy, Flaky, and Far Out, according to my younger brother and sister. But you'll see some photos here of my um, five sisters and some of my nieces, actually as well as my my six brothers and then of course as a result of that i have 22 nieces and nephews who are just um, my pride and joy and i fortunately come from your very traditional middle class somewhat functional i mean we have our dysfunctions but overall a very um, functional family and that's why as people met me and learned more about me and experienced me uh, pretty much between the ages of like 20 and 45. Uh, they could never imagine that someone like myself would have come from uh, a family like that because uh, without you know getting all teary-eyed and, and uh, wimpy about it, I come from a, just an absolute fabulous family who is very close. They're, they're all in Philadelphia. I'm the only one who lives away from home, being the rebel that I am uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we are extremely close. And as a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to going up there uh, next weekend to visit. And I was just one of those precocious kids. And yet at the same time, I also knew I was different. And what I mean by that is, if you see the photos, I'm not different in the way of many of the challenges young people have, you know, and then into adulthood. I just was different in that, uh, being the middle child, I was also kind of the uh, milkman's daughter, the postman's daughter, uh, everyone else's daughter, except what I believe to be my parents, because here I was, this little blonde hair, blue-eyed, fair child, and my, all my brothers and sisters are your stereotypical, dark, freckled, Irish uh, women and men. And so until probably the age of 10 or 11, I actually believed I was adopted. It was one of those innocent teasings, you know how that goes, all right? Those innocent childhood teasings, maybe you experienced it, maybe your kids um, now experience it, and all I can tell you is this, parents, I don't have children on my own, but all, all I can tell you from my own experience is as innocent as those teasings can be, and you probably might know this from some of the other experiences and events and situations that happen in your life, you can hang on to a lot of those things. So this idea of my being, thinking I'm adopted because I was called the milkman's daughter, the the postman's daughter, we'd go out as a family and people would be like, oh, you know, don't you think you have enough kids to have to bring along a friend? And I'd be sitting there inside just screaming, saying, I'm not a friend, I'm, you know, one of their children. And that stuck with me for many, many, many years. And you'll soon learn uh, how that resulted in, you know, everything around shifting to riches and the formula that I've created. So. You know, I was your pretty average, young, precocious young girl and um, had a wonderful family who also really advocated us running off to college and experiencing life. And not even college. My father definitely, he was a teacher, he was an academia, and he uh, also taught college, so he advocated college. But at the same time, if it was his choice, he might actually say, go live life and travel the world prior to even going into a classroom. Uh, because he certainly believed that your life experiences 
are uh, far more instrumental in your, uh, you know, your entire life than a classroom. However, you know, college was extremely important to him as well, and I did both. Uh, he did kick me out of the house. <laughs> I'm kidding. He uh, advocated I get out of the house, and I did, and I went down to Florida Atlantic University to school. And it was there that uh, my mindset about myself really started to come into play, and maybe you can relate. Here, coming from this very you know, typical, traditional, somewhat dysfunctional, middle-class family, no major, you know, family issues, uh, no major family character characters, we're all characters, but no major uh, flaws, so to speak. Uh, however, all of those earlier experiences, all those earlier comments, all of those earlier in innocent teasings started to, to kind of play and wreak havoc on my own mindset and on my own belief system about myself. So as, as this definition, if you're watching, as this definition of mindset, you know, in uh, details, it is a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines one's behavior, their outlook or their men mental attitude. And not necessarily about other people, although that came into play where I was concerned, but more so on themselves. All of those childhood, innocent, um, playful, and somewhat, and sometimes, you know, nasty dealings and interactions and comments and, you know, uh, behaviors for other people certainly settle in to your own heart and head. And it certainly did for mine. And therefore, this whole idea of the mindset, you know, didn't come to me till years later. But at the same time, now that I look back on it, it was quite influential. And it was in those early years of college that kind of the birth of my bitch was created. <laughs> um, so on the, uh, you know, in this one part of the presentation, it says, we may fear that coming to terms with being ordinary will mean a life of resignation, of giving up once and for all our hopes and dreams and ambitions. And yet when all those hopes and dreams are driven by fear or self-hate and a desperate need to be something we're not, they only bring suffering and not joy in our lives. And I'll tell you what, you would think I wrote that based on um, you know, the experiences that I had and, and the process that I've been going through uh, over the last several years. Because it turned out that when I finally got a chance to break away from my family, I did not want to be ordinary. And I knew I wasn't. I knew I was different, not only in that awkward, not fitting in, feeling like an outsider adopted way, but I also knew there was big things for me to do in life and yet not a clue what they were. But I was going to go and f figure them out anyway. So as much as my mindset wreaked havoc on my attitude and my behavior in certain ways, I was always, thank God, with my family, very supported and motivated and um, in, uh, inspired by the people around me to go and search it out. Go and search out who I was, what I was, where I wanted to go, all those, all those great things. And yet when I went off to college, I all of a sudden was in an environment down in uh, Boca Raton, Florida at school where here this middle class kid, one of 12, wearing hand-me-downs pretty much my entire life, um, trying to find my own kind of um, personality and identity. I was thrown into an environment of very wealthy children, very, um, very uh, well-to-do, uh, with attitude, adults. Um, everything around me kind of just reeked of money, wealth, um, uh, being spoiled, entitlement, you know, you name it. And yet, I thought, wow, that's, you know, they have everything that I want. They have the money, they have the position, they have the people listening to them, they have the uh, ability and the freedom to do whatever it is that they ever wanted to do. Uh, while I was kind of playing victim to the fact that I had to work my way through, you know, to even put myself in, into high school, you know, I knew I would always have to pay for my wedding and pay for anything that I wanted to do in my life. Uh, because being one of 12, you'd have to be awfully wealthy to be able to, you know, kind of uh, lavish your children. And yet my parents did, which was why my, kind of the outcome of my um, adulthood was so uh, bizarre. Because again, they gave me everything that I wanted, including 
a very supported mindset and yet uh, I allowed my own inner what we call bitches here to kind of wreak havoc on on that mindset of that uh, kind of uh, that I possessed at the time so I go off to college I'm living this this environment and I get sucked into the fact that well as much as they do have money and position and power all the things that I want they also have an attitude that came with it and if you have experienced Boca Raton in any way, shape, or form, uh, or or the people within that environment, or I would just say anywhere that has a lot of wealth around them. Uh, they, there was a term called Boca Bitches down there that kind of defined man, men or women in that environment. And I quickly decided, purposely decided, that I was going to take on that persona of a bitch if that meant that I could have power, position, and prosperity. And so that is when my, my bitch, so to speak, was born, was uh, in college or at an early age and even long before I you know, got into a business environment. And it took, it took many shapes. Uh, the fact that I was wanting to only mask this persona of a bitch, I also allowed my in insecurities, my feelings of intimidation, not being worthy enough, not being good enough, uh, not kind of fitting in those childhood behaviors and mindsets continue to, to carry through. Um, my, they kind of were interpreted in many different ways and maybe you can relate. Maybe if you've dealt with a really bad breakup or maybe an illness of any kind or someone dying that was extremely close to you. Maybe you got divorced or uh, you know, your kids were raised and out of the house and now you're an empty nester. I, I mean, there's just so many life situations that can cause us to all of a sudden wreak havoc on our heart and our head around whether or not we're good enough, whether or not uh, we deserve something, whether or not we're smart enough to go for that job or take that risk, uh, whether or not we're, we're bold enough and fearlessness enough to really pursue whatever it is that we want. Now, although I had all of those things, I was kind of bold and fearless and I really didn't give it, give, you know, too, too, too much um, thought to taking risks. At the same time, I was masking uh, all those uh, kind of insecurities and feelings of intimidation and not fit, fitting in with a major persona of a nasty woman. And it carried on for many years and while some people would say, well, Bernadette, you were still very successful. You were a junior executive before you got out of college. You were always a manager from as you know, far back as I can remember, even in high school. I always led big projects, big initiatives, global vice president position, traveled the world, bought beautiful homes, was able to spend money on anything and everything that I wanted. It was all in a kind of a guise of a very abrasive, curt, angry, bitter, egotistical, conceited, demeaning, curt persona. And, uh, you know, I'm not proud to say it, and I'm not proud to admit to it, but if I can help one other person realize for themselves that maybe what their behavior is or what their fear is or what that angst or that you know not in their stomach is all about it could be because of the fact that you have these underlying issues that need to be deal dealt with these underlying bitches that need to be really kind of acknowledged in order for you to push through them and not allow them to continue wreaking havoc on yourself because as long as they do, they are going to have an impact on your life. And why I say that is because of the fact that for 25 years, from the time I was probably 20, 21, when I kind of decided to take on this persona, until I was in my mid-40s, uh, about 45, I repelled and I kept at a distance and I built this wall up around me and that no one could penetrate. Whether it was a man, whether it was a boss, whether it was a friend, uh, you know, probably the only 
person or persons that could were my family. It's kind of like when you go home again, you become, you know, that child once again. Yet the, the armor that I put around me in, not only impacted my relationships and my uh, friendships and my career, but it also was wreaking havoc on me physically, mental, mentally, spiritually. I remember that 3F young girl. And yet, I was allowing her to be pushed down and repressed as a result of my own insecurities and intimidations and things that I could work through if I allowed and admitted it to myself. And I allowed myself to really work on what was going on in my head and my heart. My heart knew that I was that precocious 3F young girl that just wanted to grow up and become a woman and yet um, you know our, our mindset going back to that mindset just plays such a major game on us that until we find the tools and the resources and the support to, to really work through them and push through them they can uh, certainly do some damage and on a fall day <laughs> in 2007 they certainly did for me they, uh, all of a sudden I found myself standing in a parking lot with a pink slip in my hand, a uh, global vice president position, made a lot of money, traveled the world, have, had a nice comfortable lifestyle, I had all the power and authority and prosperity that I was fighting for for all those years. And I stood in this parking lot, looked at that building that I left after 12 years, and I was the happiest woman that ever walked this earth. <laughs> And right there, I basically shedded, if that's a proper word, uh, but I let all of that angst and attitude and need for ego and power and position and uh, curtness and everything else, I just let it go. And I left it all in that parking lot that day as if I was melting away like the Wicked Witch of the West. And it was the most liberating, freeing feeling in the world. And what I learned over in the coming months was all of that angst, and that's the only word I could call it for myself, all that angst that I felt for so long, all the those feelings of intimidation and not being good enough and not fitting in that I masked behind that persona, all of those things were the bitches that were really consuming me. And that's going to be key for you to think about because when you do run into someone that is very much like that personality or even yourself when you get into that personality or that head, head, headset, <laughs> uh, you, you really need to recognize the fact that we're not born that way. We're not born nasty. We're, we learn it and we use it as a, a mask and a cover up to the other inner junk that we're dealing with. And so it's that inner junk that I call bitches because if we can recognize and put a name to those things within our mainly our head that is causing such havoc on ourselves and on our life and our relationships and the, the ability to make the money we want and accomplish the dreams that we want then we can kind of look at it in black and white unemotional and say wait a minute I'm not dealing with those bitches anymore you know, it's bad enough I have to deal with some of them, you know, in your external environment. I'm not going to deal with them within myself. So, shitting the bitch and shift to riches is all about that. It's getting rid of those things. It's recognizing them. And, and it's saying, wait a minute, I want to I wanna really live a life of riches. I want to really obtain all of those things that, I, that I've always dreamt about. And women... You know, as young girls, we want to be the Barbie doll. We want to be the, you know, the woman walking down the aisle in a beautiful white gown and the children in our arms and the husband beside us and wh whatever your picture looks like. You know, what you're, you have a briefcase in your hand or you have a, a paintbrush, whatever. And we'll talk about how that plays into the whole shift from bitch to rich and the formula. Uh, and this riches is not materialistic it's not financial it's however you define your life to at the happiest most joyful place that you want it to be and for me going from that even though I had all the money and nice home travel that I wanted I was miserable 
And yet here, once I was able to let that, all of that go, I was also able to find what really was going to make me happy. And giving up all of that, because I did, I, made, I said to myself that day that I was never doing that to myself again. Not that I wasn't going to ever work for corporate before or go into, an, go into a kind of a structure like that before. It was more so I wasn't going to hide behind fear or intimidations or any other bitches that wreaked havoc on me. I wanted to pursue things boldly, fearlessly, uh, precociously. <laughs> and uh, just confidently with a lot of energy and recognizing that I'll make mistakes and, and fail at things, but at the same time, those will only fuel me like they always have throughout my life. And so now coming you know, from that life to now being an entrepreneur, to being a writer, being an author, speaker, um, a coach, a consultant, a friend, a really good one now, and uh, it's just the most freeing, and rewarding and rich thing that I could ever ask for not only myself, but for you as well. And that's how the Shift to Riches formula came about. People would ask me, uh, well, how, what process did you go through? How did you do it? How did you actually go from you know beating yourself up on a regular basis to really working on yourself? Because that's what it's all about. It's how do you work on yourself and how do you take time to focus on you in order to um, really decide, and we'll talk about this more, but really decide that and commit and take a pledge to achieve whatever goals and dreams and riches you have and you want and you deserve in this lifetime. And I talk about a lot on uh, my radio show, if you're not aware of it, Shedding the Bitch Radio on Tuesdays at noon. <laughs> um, I talk about the fact that, you know, we have one life and we don't get a second chance, at least like after you pass. So you have a second chance while you're here. And so why spend time in the past? Why spend time fearing and rebelling against the future? And why not take every opportunity right now, this very second, while even on this call, to really focus on you? And I hope that while you're even sitting here for this, this hour, you've been able to tune everything out, turn off the phone, turn off the email, the Facebook page, and really just, you know, take time to, even if you learn one little thing today that gets you going. And we'll also talk about that you can learn something and be inspired and motivated to, to, uh, with, of something. It doesn't mean you actually take action on it. And that's what at least I'm all about in the programs that we do here all about is wanting you to take massive, rich action to uh, realizing whatever you want and don't want out of this lifetime. So the Shift to Riches formula, it was my process. And think of it as just kind of a, a shedding process, a transformation process. Uh, one minute, I think I have someone calling me. Let's take a look. Let's make sure everything's going A-OK. -okay. Yep, OK. I want to make sure one of you didn't have a question. Uh, so, the one thing I want you to think about when we talk through the Shift to Riches formula is where are you in the process and what do you need to do? And we're not going to be able to drill into every one of these areas. We're going to touch on them, but we're not going to drill into them. And so therefore, what I would advocate to you is become one of our Richie Club members, join SheddingTheBitch.com, take the pledge and you will get access to not only um, events and future opportunities like this webinar and other programs that we do drilling in to this formula, but you'll also get free resources immediately when you, when you sign up. You'll be able to go out and see uh, different tools that we use and pull them down, use them. And even though if you're not a member just right now at this very moment, I'll be able to point you toward um, some free complimentary um, tools that you can start using immediately to get an idea 
But at the same time, join the community. You'll not only get those tools and those resources and those event notices and whatnot, but you'll also get a community of other like-minded people that you can relate to that go through the same thing you do. And I always talk about the fact that, you know, Oprah, as wealthy as she is, as successful and powerful as she is, you know, she openly talks about too and discloses the demons, the bitches that consume her and the, the struggle that she has each and every day to kind of keep them at bay or at least get rid of them or, or minimize their impact on her. So, it, so whoever it is that you look up to and respect and revere, just remember, we all are human and, the, and we all have a heart and unfortunately we all have a head that can just really take advantage of what it is that we really want. And what our job is, what your job is each and every day is to manage it, control it, and direct it the way you want it to go. Because at the end of your lifetime, I know at the end of my lifetime, I do not want to say, nope, my head just got the better of me and prevented me from blah, blah, blah. I don't want to play victim. So let's find ways and, and hopefully the shift to riches formula will give you that tool to, uh, to really keep yourself focused and motivated and supported because that's what you get here, is the support to go through the process and go through the steps and have your own successes and, and missteps and at the same time find the riches that you, that you so desire and so want. So the shift to riches formula. Again, what I also found too is as smart and skilled and talented and experienced as I was all those years in corporate, and I did, you know, rise to a very nice high level position. Um, I sabotaged it. It was eventually going to end because of the fact that I first did not have an empowered mindset. I did not first have a strong, confident, bold, um, self-believed mindset. And therefore, one of the things that we really have a mission on here at Chet and the Bitch is to make sure people recognize the fact that they first have to have an empowered mindset before they can really leverage the skill, talents, and, and experiences that they possess and they gain, whether it's you know, professionally or personally. So the Shift to Riches formula wants to take a look at both the mindset first from a personal development perspective, and then how can that be leveraged within developing the skill set both personally and professionally. And, and having those two working together in tandem, both your mindset and your skill set, there is absolutely nothing in this life that you can't do. Because actually right now, at this very moment in time, there's nothing in life that you don't have that you need to do whatever it is that you want to do. So if you believe that all those resources and all the things that you need are out there, you just need to figure out and believe and get very resourceful as to how to go and achieve them, that's what we want to do here. And that's how the shift to riches formula can help you. So we talk about mindset and skill set and basically just like a kind of a grieving process, this is a shedding process where we want you to discover, confront, and shed in order to create and accelerate whatever it is in life that you want. And we're gonna break this down, down a bit, okay? Um, because the discover, confront, and shed piece especially the discover piece, it's not only about the bitches. It's not only about the negatives. Keeping in mind, your bitches are those fears, insecurities, doubts, uncertainties, low self-esteem, not fitting in, whatever negative or ugly belief system that you have of yourself. That's what we call bitches around here, okay? And we want you to discover them. We want you to become aware of them. We want you to be raw and honest with yourself about what those things are. At the same time, however, I also want you to discover the riches that you possess, the skills, talents, achievements, experiences, expertise that you possess. Because it's almost like a catch-22. Which comes first, the riches or the bitches? <laughs> you know, do you, do you pay attention to your riches first so then you can kind of combat those, those you know, um, negative Nellies? That are, that are in your head, or unfortunately, do you, have, do you have to become aware of those ugly things and then leverage your, your strengths and your, you know, your skills and your talents in order to, to combat whatever. 
but we do look at both. We want you to really discover for yourself both what makes you brilliant and what's simply holding you up. And therefore, the discover phase goes into a great deal of effort. And, it's, and that's where you really want to focus a large part of your time. Because the other part about discovery, too, that I've learned is, unlike myself, because I, I was always a goal setter, I was always a task or a to-do list maker. I was always a very action-oriented person. But what I also learned is that many people are not. Many people don't know what goals or dreams they have for themselves. They're so consumed with worrying about everybody else. So the discover phase is also to help you really just articulate and detail out very specifically and on a piece of paper, not just in your head, is on a piece of paper really work through the, um, what it is you want, what it is you don't want, what resources, skills, talents do you have, what do you need, just put it all out there. Just map it all out. And the one thing I advocate strongly is to get yourself a journal. And I have three of them sitting in front of me. One of them is a work to do journal. One of them is a, my morning affirmation journal. One, one is my uh, goal setting and tasks and to do list journal, more of my business journal. But whatever it is, and I don't even care if it's a legal pad. I just want you to have something that you can get it out of your head and on a piece of paper and the discover phase really works you hard through that process to do that. Okay? Then we go to then we go to confronting it because I'll tell you what, a lot of us don't want to admit the dirty laundry that we have. We don't want to um, you know, we get fearful. Uh, bitches get kind of, you know, come up get drummed up inside us when it comes to facing our fears, facing our insecurities, facing our sadness, our depression, our hardship, our ego, our vanity. Uh, we tend not to, we tend to want to just ignore it. But you can't, you can't. You have to push through, you have to, um, you have to both acknowledge it and in some cases, those things that are really good, those riches, you want to honor them. So discover is just extremely important, but confronting is that much more important because confronting is definitely going to uh, test your will. It's going to test your commitment to you. It's going to test that pledge that you took. It's going to test your willingness to sacrifice, your willingness to not only give yourself rewards, but also consequences for what action you take or don't take. Um, but once you confront things, then you can find solutions to move on from them. And that's the beautiful thing. And not only that, but confronting is also those, goes back to those riches. So many of us have skills and talents that we never really recognize, acknowledge, or even articulate. And since I've been out on my own, and especially since, you know, uh, I've been going through this whole shedding the bitch process myself, both professionally and personally, I've also learned that I have to shamelessly recognize my skills and talents and achievements because it only is going to benefit the people that I'm working with. It's only going to benefit you if I can both acknowledge my uglies while I'm also honoring all the brilliance and the beauty and the talents that I have. And you need to do the same. And you need to be able to kind of own that and honor that regardless of anybody else does it's not important what anybody else thinks it's important what you think of yourself and that's what the confronting phase is all about and we provide you tools and and tips and videos and audios and all kinds of uh, other um, opportunities for you to work through that process now the other thing I do want to point out even at this early stage is this is a very iterative process. And what I mean by that is you're going to go and you know, initially discover things and move on to confronting them. And the confronting of them, like I had mentioned, is going to drum up other things of which maybe you didn't recognize before. And therefore, you go back to discovering something that you're now needing to confront again. And you know, sometimes you might feel like, oh my gosh, you're going around in circles and you're never pushing through. Well, if you keep going, keep going, keep pushing, you're going to eventually push through. And if it's not all of the bitches or all of the riches, 
that you push through. It's going to be even at least one that you can then push through, move on, move away from, and keep moving forward. So I also want to make sure that I throw out there that, yes, this thing could be a very circular process, um, but, do, but just stay focused and stay strong and, and stay that determined to uh, do whatever it takes for you to, to find those riches that, that life has to offer you. And then you're going to shed them. Um, and, and this actually also creates some of those uh, inner demons to be, uh, to be uh, woken up, so to speak, because you're going to have been changing throughout this whole process. And when you change, everything around you changes. And that could involve the people that you hang out with, the people that you work with, the place you work with. It could be the people that you um, uh, socialize with, but you're also committed to, a love relationship. It could be how you handle your finances, could be where you live. And that in itself creates a lot of bitches for people. And again, what you just need to keep your, your head on about and your focus on is what is the end game? What is those, what's that ultimate dream that you're, 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 that you're reaching for? And if you want it bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes, even make those changes. And just a quick story, um, you know, when I initially went out on my own, I left corporate and I had a very large circle of friends. Um, and I would say, you know, every year uh, for Christmas, I would have this big Christmas party, 80 people, easy. I'd spend thousands of dollars decorating my house and buying food and liquor and whatnot. And I leave corporate, I go through this kind of the shitting process. My identity is nothing like it was, you know, months before. And I have my Christmas party and that was the last event, situation, opportunity that I ever saw those people again. It was if they saw that I wasn't that same person, I wasn't that same corporate bitch <laughs> that had a lot of, you know, that was not had a lot of money, but had um, a lot of frivolous ideas and had the ego and had the attitude that I once had. And they just didn't know how to adjust to that. They didn't know how to experience that. And the fact that I then walked away from all of that to sacrifice every dime in my wallet to then go on and pursue what I really wanted in life, then that even caught them more off guard. And they didn't know how to handle it. And as opposed to trying to engage me with it uh, and or even discuss it, that they're kind of uncomfortable, I'm changing, they're not sure you know, how they're to adjust to, to the different person that I was, so forth and so on. Um, I lost the whole circle of friends that I had had for years uh, up until that point. And there was many nights for a long time, and I'm talking year, year and a half, I sat on my couch alone Friday and Saturday nights as a result. But I'll tell you what, sitting alone on my couch <laughs> on a Friday or Saturday night, I was the happiest woman I had ever been. And I just knew that with time, that I would then attract the type of people uh, that I was and that I wanted to be. And so t now, several years later, a few years later, I have a very small group of friends who would absolutely do anything that I need them to do, as opposed to just having a surface type of, of relationship or acquaintance with, with a large group of people. So through your shedding process, it, it is going to mean that you not only shed what, what's going on inside you, it's going to mean that everything around you is going to change because you're not going to have the same head on your shoulders. You're not going to have the same heart. Your heart's going to be much bigger. It's going to want much bigger. It's going to need much bigger. And it's only going to want much bigger. Bring drama and, and, you know, and chaos to my life and I want nothing to do with you. And I breeded <laughs> on that before. You know, it was like my water to me before. And now I just can't even, I can't even stomach it. Even, even TV shows. So, now that you've gone through this whole adjustment to your mind, the shift to your mindset, 
the discover, confront, and shedding process, it's going to open up a whole new world of opportunities for you. That will in itself create some new stuff, but yet, as you're going through this process, you're also gaining such confidence and such um, skill around how to handle bad, negative, hard, challenging things when they come up. And therefore, as you move on to creating and accelerating now, whatever it is that you want, you're going to have all the, the tools and the mindset and the confidence and the fearlessness. And it might not all be there. This thing takes time. It's not as if it happens overnight. Yet, at the same time, you're going to kind of be putting the you know the pieces of the puzzle together to where you're like, wow, geez, that was much <laughs> that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. That that's much easier than I thought it was going to be, because sometimes our own head exaggerates things, and it makes things come off and appear so much harder or so much scarier or so much more painful than it actually is. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you went, went through something hard or feared something or were really anxious about something? And yet, if you just confronted it and found the solutions, found the opportunities, found the resources, found the support that you needed, and you were able to kind of solve it or shed it, then kind of a whole new opportunity kind of presented itself and you, were, you moved on to creating something totally different. And that's what the create field, uh, create part of the phase is, is create whatever it is that you want now and find those resources and those support systems and those tools and those networks that would help you create whatever it is that you want, personally or professionally. I had a woman come up to me after um, I, I had a public speaking uh, program around this very subject. And she came up to me after and she said, I'm quitting my job. And I knew of her uh, from a, a number of other different uh, events. And I knew she was uh, pretty high up there in the food chain at her very high profile company. So when she said this, I you know, basically was like, wait, 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 please, you know, don't do, don't do anything off of a, you know, 45 minute presentation. She said, no, 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 it's not that. It's just, I was never ready. I always knew for the past three or four years I needed to make a change, but I wasn't ready for it. And yet, as a result of your discussion and your kind of your uh, tough love, honest, raw, discussion I was having with them, she said, I just recognize the fact that I've just been kind of wreaking havoc on myself, at which prevented her from really making the decisions that she needed to be able to make. So she decided right then and there that as of that day, she was going to go back and she was resigning. And uh, I'm glad to say that it's worked out beautifully for her. And uh, so whatever it takes, it could be a word, it could be a tool or a tip, it could be a quote, it could be a person just kind of, you know, resting their hand on your shoulder, whatever it is that makes you, you know, make that shift and make that change for yourself. Uh, that's what the creating is, is all about. And again, it could be personally or professionally. All of, the, all of these um, steps, all the tools, all of the... Uh, techniques that you learn can be applied to yourself personally or professionally. And the accelerate is really also having you consider that where you are right now, even if you are, it, you are creating something really new for yourself, you want to accelerate it, you want to speed it up, you want to add to it, you want to make it much bigger and bolder than you even considered at the beginning. Uh, for example, the other night I was at an, at an event and um, it was an event of entrepreneurs and they, we were talking about how we can find investors for our businesses. And this young lady raised her hand and she apologized immediately that she was raising her hand. And then she went on to apologize that this question may not seem very impactful to the, the panel of women 
that were uh, speaking because to her, she just had this small business. She, it was never going to make a million dollars, even, you know, let alone tens of millions of dollars. And therefore, she went on with her question around how can I find the people that would want to invest in me, even though I'm not, I don't have a big idea or a big business. Well, I have to tell you, I just wanted to go and hug the girl. And she was actually sitting to my left. I just wanted to go and hug her. At the same time, I wanted to smack her, okay? <laughs> because, you know, from just her, the pre you know, her presence, I knew there was something there. I knew that she just was afraid or something, uh, uh, some inner bitch was preventing her from thinking bigger. And she was playing victim because it's much easier to say, well, I'm not going to have a big business than to want a big business and fear, fear that you're not going to be able to achieve it. And so fortunately, the, the women panelists, uh, you know, kind of dug into it. And then I dug, in, dug into it with her afterwards. And I said, what makes you think that you can't have a, a huge, you know, business? And I said, what is it? And she went on to explain it to me. And immediately I said to her, I said, you need to start thinking bigger. You need to start believing in yourself. And the first way you can start believing in yourself, here's a tip for you, is to think big. You know, they used to say in the 80s, like, uh, uh, make it, uh, fake it until you make it. Some people don't like that saying anymore. I do. Why not? Why not? Why not believe you're going to have a huge, big, whatever, whatever your dream is, and fake it, pursue it, do what you need to do to get there until you make it. And, and act as if you have something really big. I mean, isn't that what law of attraction and affirmations and all that's about? So how would it differ for you and, and that young girl? I, I'm sorry, young woman. So our minds, our head, plays such dirty, nasty tricks on us. And it's all around how you can learn tips and tools and techniques to manipulate your, your head games, manipulate your mindset, get it you know, in a place where you, know, you manage it, you control it, you determine if, if it's confident, bold, fearless or not. And you don't let these inner critics, the little devils, the demons, um, that get into her head and maybe they are from childhood like I explained in my own story uh, and I'm not saying that all of a sudden you're going to be a fully self-actualized individual I don't think I've ever met one maybe the Dalai Lama I don't know I've never met him but <laughs> but it's a daily daily process and a daily daily struggle at times and a daily daily um, feeling of a, of rich of acceleration of just brilliance when we can actually allow ourselves to believe in everything that we deserve and everything that we are and everything that we want to be. And the shift to riches formula is meant to give you those to give you those tools and to give you those tips and to give you those techniques in order to do that. And again, if you if you do not have that support, that those tools and those tips, then go to sheddingthebitch.com. I'd love you to be part of the community. Um, go into the site, go to uh, the Enrich page, pull down some tools if you want to get an idea as to you know, what type of tools and tips and resources we provide uh, to go through this Shift to Riches formula. You can pull some samples down there. Then when you join, you can dig even deeper and as we go forward, we're going to be just building out, and we, and we already have a great amount of content for you. But I continually, on a daily basis, get uh, feedback as to what areas of pain and joy people are experiencing. And therefore, how can Shedding the Bitch and our Shift to Riches programs help you through that? And one thing that's interesting, and if you need a visual, because I'm one of the tools that I provide, you know, as well throughout my programs and and um, content, is anything visual, because I'm a visual person. So as I went was going through my own 
transformation, my own shedding, and I was writing my book, I came up with these two characters. The, uh, the, and if you're watching this online, you'll see two women, one majorly a bitch, and the other one extremely happy and joyful. And I used them as I was writing my book in order to get, the, get my mindset, get my memory, get my experiences and the events that I needed to capture in the book. I needed to you know, kind of visualize them. And so throughout my writing process, I would call them bitch and happy. Because that's, I mean, look at them. That's exactly what, they're, what they you know, project and put out in the world. And yet when I started promoting the book, and uh, the book is Shedding the Corporate Bitch. When I started promoting the book, I was being asked to actually kind of put a name, uh, put a, uh, per pers a personality to those two individuals. And so I put a contest out on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and whatnot. And I said, okay, name the girls, name the characters. What, you know, what do you see uh, their names to be that would help us to uh, leverage them within our marketing materials and whatnot? And so their names are pain and joy. So when you think about shifting from bitch to rich, and if you don't want to walk around going, oh, I'm, you know, working with shift, you know, shifting to, uh, you know, from bitch to rich or working with shedding the bitch, you can say shifting from pain to joy because it means the same thing. It's how do you take out all the pain, all the hurt, all the sadness, all the fear, insecurity, doubt, uh, low self-belief in yourself. How do you take that? and move it toward being more joyful and being more free and liberated and however else you personally want to describe it. And the one thing about the shift to riches formula is it is about you. It's allowing you to define whatever it is that you want to be accomplishing in life. It doesn't, it's not a cookie cutter for everybody. The same, the same process might be implemented with multiple people and yet their experiences are going to be so vastly different. And that's the beauty of the rich, Richie community as well, is everyone deals with similar types of bitches. And they also possess similar types of riches. And how can you leverage them, even if theirs is so drastically different than yours, but that, you know, how can you leverage each other to help and, and support each other? And our Richie community allows, allows all its members to do that. So I would just wanted to kind of give you one task, one kind of rich action to initially take to let you experience the shift to riches formula. So if you went on to sheddingthebitch.com, you don't even need to uh, sign up, although we want you to, although I'd love you to. Uh, you can download some free resources, especially our, our um, rich sheet, we call them, which is all around you committing and taking that pledge to yourself to make a change in your life. So that's your first step. It'll kind of be your validation that you're willing and wanting to make a change and make a shift and to really focus and commit to you. So if you go to sheddingthebitch.com forward slash enrich, you can download three or four different tools, one of which is our rich sheet around making a commitment to yourself. And then of course we want you to uh, take the pledge at sheddingthebitch.com. And if you take the pledge, it automatically gives you a free membership to our website and all of our newsletters and notifications and of events and programs and whatnot. And you also get bonus announcements on drawings and contests and other things that go on, our bitch parties and, and other events. And then at the same time, what I'd love you to do is uh, join an exclusive group of people only 10, I only uh, uh, take 10 in, to work through the Shift to Riches formula over, five, over a five-week program. And you will get all the tools and the assessments and the workbooks and the articles and videos and audios that go along with that throughout the five-week program. And I only allow 10 people. There would be no exception to that. And the reason for that is they're 90-minute sessions once a week for five weeks. And I really want to make sure that each individual has an opportunity to work with the group. And that's the beauty of these, the, the groups uh, that I work with is you don't only have me to support you. You also have, you know, nine other uh, experiences, skills, talents, people dealing with situations similar to yours or maybe drastically different and yet it can, can apply 
to what you're dealing with. And so that's a beautiful thing when it comes to uh, masterminding, when it comes to group coaching, when it comes to just support teams, support systems. And at the same time, within that five weeks, you're also going to get some time, one-on-one -on -one time with me. Overall, it's about a, it's an hour throughout the five weeks. You can take it in one big one-hour session, or you can take it, you know, in 20-minute increments, whatever the case might be. And then you can email me until the cows come home. I'll tell you when to stop if, if it gets out of hand. But you can also communicate with me through email throughout that five-week program. My goal, my ultimate goal for you is to help you shift, to help you go from pain to joy, to help you realize what your bitches are that are getting you in the way, honoring those riches that you already possess and then helping you to create and accelerate whatever it is that you want in life. And right now, just for these groups, this group right here on this call, you're going to be able to get this five weeks of programs for $199. And that's, you'll see on the website, that is um, a drastic discount from what it typically is. And if I have to have more than um, one group of 10, then I can certainly do that. So please, if you see that the, the, the inventory count, so to speak, is out and uh, a class is full, um, we will you know, kick off another group if that's the case, all right? But I just... I want to give you an opportunity, I want to give you a platform, I want to give you the support system for you to really begin and commit and pledge to yourself that you want something different out of life. You want something um, bigger. You want a richer, joyful life. And if we, and we know we can here at Shedding the Bitch, can help you with that, then that's what I would love, to, love, love to do with you. Okay? So I'm just going to see if anyone has any questions before I let you go. And it doesn't appear that we do. So I want to thank all of you very much for joining us today and uh, come back and check out SheddingTheBitch.com and join our Richie community. Take care, everybody. Thank you.